Last time, we saw that it's possible to find the area of any square built on the diagonal of a rectangle. So in other words, we take some rectangle, let's say this one, and let's just recall the construction. We sort of made duplicate copies of it around and uh, constructed a square from this, that blue square. And the question is, how big is the blue square? Well, it's the area of the entire big square, that orange square, which as you can see is 7 by 7. Each side of it is 3 plus 4, minus the area of those four green triangles on the outside. So we're going to take the area of the whole thing and then cut away a triangle out of every corner. Uh, well, two of those triangles forms a rectangle, a 3 by 4 rectangle, our original one. So all we need to do is take the area of the whole square, which is 7 by 7, and subtract those two rectangles. Well, 7 by 7 is 49, and we'll subtract two of the rectangles, which each have area 3 by 4, which is 12. And that leaves us with 49 minus 24, which is 25. There we go. The area of that square is 25. And actually, we get something else from that, which is if you have a square that has area 5, we actually know how big the sides are. It must be a 5 by 5 square. So this is pretty cool. Not only can you get the area of the square, you can actually figure out how long that length is, which is actually one of the most important things about the theorem. So this is great, but it's a pretty elaborate construction. And what we'll find is that as you do this, you're starting to repeat the same steps over and over again, and it's possible to simplify them. There's a neat idea here, which is that if you do the same thing and then undo it, you can kind of cancel that out. Uh, and, and I want to just give a quick example of this. So here's a little game. Think of a number, let's say between 1 and 10, but it could be any number. Add 8, subtract 3, and then subtract that original number you started with. Your answer is 5. Now, this isn't too hard to see. Uh, but my point isn't that it's hard, it's that, it's that you're doing and undoing something. Let's say I start with 6, that's my number. I add 8, I subtract 3, and then I subtract my original number. Well, in the course of doing this, I've added 6 and subtracted 6. That cancels out. All I've got here is the adding 8 and the subtracting 3. Of course that's going to be 5. Uh, wh let's say my original number was 117. Well, again, I'm adding 117 and subtracting 117. My answer is still going to be 5, just that plus 8 minus 3. In fact, whatever, whatever number I pick, call it x, I'm adding x and subtracting x, those are going to cancel out, I'm always going to get 5. And this is a very simple one, but you can make more complex ones uh, that essentially do the same thing, that kind of cleverly undo the things that they've done to always end up with the same answer. So this is a fun one you can try, uh, and, and you can make up your own uh, as you get more facile with that. So why do I mention this? Well, let's look at our picture from our original triangle. This thing on the left, the square, is the one we just used. But people who were actually finding the area of that big square usually had another way to do it. And, and that picture is on the right. So let's see what this looks like. Let's say we were taking that original one. It was a 3 by 4 rectangle. That gave us the 7 by 7 square. Well, when you're finding the area of it, there's this other way, which is break it into those pieces, those two squares and two rectangles you see on the right, and, and find the area of those. So you could do 7 times 7, but you could also say, well, that little square is 3 by 3, that's 9. That big square is 4 by 4, that's 16. And then you have two rectangles. But if you recall, if we're adding those two rectal rectangles in, we need to subtract two rectangles off later. Namely, those two triangles form a rectangle, and those two triangles form another rectangle. Those four triangles we need to cut away are exactly the same as these two rectangles that we'll cut away from this square. In other words, if we want to find that area of the blue square, it just should be the same as those two squares on the right. And indeed, 9 plus 16 is 25, the same answer we got before. Let's, let's look at another example of this. Uh, what if it's 
a 6x8 rectangle we used to build this whole thing. Well, if we want to find that area of the blue square, that square on the left, uh, inside the bigger square, we can look to the one on the right. Uh, there's that little square is 6x6, six six, which is 36. The big one is 8x8, eight eight, which is 64. So that one should just be the sum of those two. The triangles are added and then subtracted. So they cancel out. In fact, all that matters is what those two squares built off of the smaller sides of the right triangle are. Those two together have to add up to the blue square. Why? Well, add those, add those four triangles back in, and you get the same thing. So when you take them away, you should have the same thing on either picture also. And this is the Pythagorean theorem. This relationship between the squares, the areas of the squares of a right triangle. And what it says is, in any right triangle, so we have a right angle there, in any right triangle, the squares built off of the small sides, that's those ones, is equal, it has equal area to the square built off the large side. And in fact, we really just gave a proof of that. That, that picture from the earlier slide said exactly that, and it didn't matter what triangle we used. So we have a simplification of our argument now, and actually a really beautiful and elegant relationship of these squares. All we have to do to find the area of the big square on the left is find the area of each of these squares, 9 and 16, and add them together. That gives us the area of that square. And if we want, that also tells us how long that side is, since it must be a 5 by 5 square if it has area 25. That's it. That is the Pythagorean theorem. It has incredible and numerous uses, which I will be back to show you later, at least some of them. And here's a problem for you to try. And if you can do this, I think you have the heart of the Pythagorean theorem. If you know that this is a right triangle with smaller sides 2 and 5, what is the area of that red square?